This case involves a 48-year-old woman with an unremarkable medical history. The anterior maxilla has been reconstructed with all ceramic bridges and single crowns about two years ago. As part of this reconstruction, teeth 2-1 and 2-2 were endodontically treated and received relatively large posts. Since then, a longitudinal fracture of tooth 2-2 has occurred, and a few weeks ago, a buccal fistula was detected. The relevant area is explored with a periodontal probe all the way to the apex, and there seems to be no remaining buccal bone. We plan to remove this tooth and to close the gap with a single tooth implant. In the present intervention, we will extract the tooth, fill the socket with a bone substitute material, and additionally cover it with a collagen membrane. With this method, the volume and soft tissue contour will be preserved by a procedure known as ridge preservation. Successful ridge preservation makes later surgical interventions easier or avoids them altogether. With a periodontal probe, we explore the bone around tooth 2-2. Two -two. The loss of the buccal bone plate is clearly palpable, while sufficient bone is still present on the palatal aspect. First, we remove the remaining granulation and connective tissue from the buccal tooth surface with a microscalpel blade. Additionally, any accessible Sharpies fibers in the region are severed. For this, we use a periotome and a tunneling instrument according to Zur. We now mobilize the tooth with a small lever instrument and extraction tools, according to Carl Ludwig Ackermann. And remove it with an extraction forceps using careful rotational movements. Occasionally, as in this case, the prosthetic crown can be lost during this process but the final removal of the tooth will pose no problem. Here, we can clearly see that the buccal bone plate is missing. We detach the buccal mucosa at site 2-2 and at part of the adjacent sites 2-1 and 2-3 from the bone with a tunneling instrument. This creates space for the membrane. We then cut a template for the membrane from a sterile sheet of paper. The sterile template is best cut with curved scissors. To check the shape and size match, the template is held against the outer side of the defect. In a further step, the contours of the template are refined. The membrane must overlap the defect region both mesially and distally. It should rest on the adjacent bony structures and ensure a good crestal seal of the socket. The Geistlich Combi Kit Collagen consists of a 16 times 22 millimeter Geistlich BioGuide collagen membrane and a 100 milligram Geistlich BioOS collagen block which are individually packaged in sterile blisters. The Geistlich BioOS collagen block absorbs liquids well. Both products should be used together in the same procedure. The collagen membrane has two sides, which are differently structured. The side of the membrane facing outward after application is marked with the embossed word up on its surface, as can clearly be seen here. Based on the previously made paper template, we cut the membrane to size. We fold the membrane over once and insert it into the socket with forceps. 
we wet it with sterile saline solution. The part of the membrane, located apically of the defect, is folded back onto the adjacent bone. This is followed by introducing the BioOS collagen block. This block consists of 90% Geistlich BioOS granules. The remaining 10% are collagen, which holds the Geistlich BioOS granules in the block together. This collagen has no barrier function. The barrier function is provided by the Geistlich BioGuide membrane. The block absorbs liquids well and is easily divisible and moldable. These properties make the introduction of the bone substitute material into the defect considerably easier. Here, we do this a bit at a time, carefully condensing each bit as we go along. We remember to check the collagen membrane for correct positioning, adjusting it if required, so that the bone defect and socket will seal well. The Geistlich BioGuide is fastened with a vertical mattress suture on the palatal gingiva, allowing secondary intention healing. Here, we use a microsurgical Serolin 60 suture. Finally, the previously fabricated provisional is introduced and checked for proper fitting. In the present case, the provisional is extended in the apical region to ensure a satisfactory functional and aesthetic result.